about being a cop, but then I like realized tragically, I'm not, I don't want to be, I want it to be like, I'm from the hood cop who knows all the shit, but I'm not going to be that guy. Mm. I'm going to be suburban cop who like, mm. the, and that's the worst type of cop to be suburban cop in the hood. They just put in the hood. Cause he's like, he's black. You'll get it. And it's yeah. like, yeah, I don't want to be that cop. I want to be, no. I want to be like, I know y'all I'm from around here, but I'm not, I'm not from around here. And everybody knows I'm not from around here. So that, that, kind of, that kind of killed it for me. <laughs> killed kind of it. killed my cop fancy. Killed the dream. Oh, straight up homicide. You don't do any other thing. That's the only type of cop I respect is homicide. Uh, the only cops I respect are on homicide. Law and Order SVU, right? Them Look. and homicide detectives. I'll give you homicide. The, the the I don't know about the drug guys because that's got to be like they're like the undercover. They just always, like going just... undercover would be a hard ass profession. Correct. You'd have to be a good actor, but also there's like, dude, you know, this is just, this I, just I, an acting I, fantasy. Do you nah, just admire well, them for their acting maybe, skills? Wow, maybe that could be it. But also, you know like, killed I, that black I kid, see, but I see <laughs> you're the you're systemic issues. I see the systemic issues of like, I have to infiltrate this group, and uh, you know, once we get all of their drugs, we uh, take those drugs from our fucking DAA warehouse, and maybe a corrupt cop like sells them back to the streets and in this endless cycle of 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 fucking the drug trade and whatever else you know what i mean yeah but then on the other hand it would be like it would be so like donnie brasco if it would be so gut-wrenching to to be undercover and to like infiltrate this gang and eventually earn their trust and and then have to betray them in the end and then they just know you as a rat but these are your friends but they were never really your friends you know what i mean that's a lot there's a lot to unpack there and so it's the paradox that is alluring you know what i mean i just want to be i just want to be appreciated no i just want i just want to smoke a cigarette don't worry about it i just want to smoke a cigarette and tell some people and tell some tell some people in like my chevy caprice that they're like showing them pictures now, I don't give a fuck about nothing y'all got going on. I'm the murder police. I only care about the body. That's all I'm going for. I only care about the body. I don't care what else you got going I don't on. Care, I, I, don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. I give a fuck about the body. It's the position of power. Of like, yeah. I could fuck you guys over. No, 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 no. It's I'm the position of... Right? No, it's, no, not benevolent. It's the position, benevolent. It's the position of like, I am the most necessary ass police <laughs> that there are. Somebody has died and I have showed up. I have I no concern about bare, anything else. I am anything the bare else. Bones. I, there is a dead body. <laughs> Somebody is a murderer in this uh-huh. neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you're selling heroin out Somebody of the house. You know, okay? I don't give a fuck about heroin. I don't give a fuck about prostitution. Mm, nope. I don't None give a fuck it. about gambling, uh, nope. loan sharking. Nope. There is a dead person. You got shot in his face. Uh huh. I have showed up with a coffee and a tired look because <laughs> I coached my daughter's basketball team. Also, yep. <laughs> there is a dead body here. Tell me who this is so I can make her. <laughs> so play. I can. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta go tomorrow morning. I gotta. Yeah. I gotta coach again tomorrow yeah. morning. Yeah. I'm trying to get out of here as fast as fucking possible. Okay. I'm, I'm receiving calls. About about DNA under under fingernails mm-hmm. from the dead body that was fished out of the bayou last night. The bayou. And my and while my while my daughter is running fucking fucking layup <laughs> drills in her friends. And that's the type of cop. Those type of cop. I'm like, yeah, that 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 guy's that, that guy's the most necessary ass. <laughs> I never wanted to be. A, I thought I wanted to be a cop, and then now I'm doing all this shit, and I'm like, you know what? I should have gone to grad school. All I right? am too deep in. I'm, I'm too deep. I'm in. too deep. I'm and too deep. And she right. and, and she just oh now she wants to go to Juilliard, but she don't mm. have no she don't have Juilliard skills. So now, <laughs> so now I'm, I'm not a, I'm not good enough of a coach to be able to coach her into a scholarship. So I mean I don't know what we're gonna do. Now I'm taking a little money on the side. Now I'm doing uh-huh. little little mm-hmm. things. I'm taking stuff out the locker. No, Double the dipping funny, a little the, bit. The, yep. The, the yeah the, the that yeah the. It's it is tragic to watching first forty eight and seeing the murder police like mm-hmm. actually talk to like some sixteen year old who knows none of his rights. He understands none of this because he has a learning disability. <laughs> like he's, he's, he's being convicted. Like no no no, this is not. If you tell him what you did, and we can work something out. Not knowing that work something by work something out, he means he's going to give you ninety nine years. Yeah, <laughs> minimal. Hey, I mean that's still in two state, digits, you know. Double digits, Texas, it's not yeah. triple digits. Could have been triple digits. No, you know? no. State of Texas automatic ninety nine years. 
murder. That's Automatic. fucking nuts. That's 99. Insane. That's just, that's just, that is... that's cruel. That's cool. <laughs> 99 years. Wait, why not do the 100? Just because we like the sound of And when years. you get out, if you get out after those 99 years, live to be a ridiculously old age, yeah. you still can't vote. Still can't vote. Still can't vote. So fuck you. You yeah. know what? Okay. We got to go. Okay. We gotta get uh, going. Kind of, kind of peel it back here. Kind of get back to the real issues at hand. We got in our feels. Those yeah. real issues are uh, our 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 man Red Cloud, okay. prominent Lakota leader in Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Montana. Of course, interesting guy, like a super good strategist. Is born May eighteen twenty one. To this brule woman named walks as she thinks gives birth to their son this brule couple and he's named in honor of a red meteorite that has streaked over a lakota camp he's given the name makpia luta which okay. is red cloud right walks as she thinks is definitely a woman who takes long walks and sometimes she talks to herself, but then like she sees other people while she's yep. talking to herself and she pretends oh, yeah. that she's just humming a song. I haven't oh, done yeah. that before. That's not That's, me also. I do, every day. I okay. do that a lot. I've done that. I used to go on, on walks while I think and, and think out loud and you get a little shouty sometimes. And then one time you go to the one time you go to the park that you usually go to because there's a path that runs to it across a bridge that leads to your house and you see a couple fucking in the middle of the basketball court that's not real and, though so no, what I, no, no what i just happened. said is real no this no, happened what I, just said is real. I had to yell out i yelled out i was like are you guys fucking and then they really and then they got it. really you're this a piece is... of shit for that let them fucking peace <laughs> what's i gonna do i was like gonna watch like a creep? no just like, move on with I your mean... day <laughs> like you've never seen people fuck wow the privilege the privilege i was upset that's why i had to go on the walk because i i needed to walk while i think so i could talk some shit out about how angry i was and yeah. then i was a little neurotic and so i did a neurotic and then you dick karen, move you karen you karen a couple i totally got were they a black were they a black why couple were they fucking in the middle of the basketball because they, court because they, no, can, they, have, they can have couple. fun they're they're gonna have couple. fun because it's fine to have fun and it's fine to have sex in public. Not around me. That's fine. No. Yeah, I, I right. know that now, and now, okay. now I 18, won't do that. Eighteen, you're, you're lost. Lone man's, or I'm sorry, Red Cloud's father. This guy named Lone Man. He dies of alcohol addiction. It's not even. He was like addicted to whiskey but it's not even truly whiskey. They had like a like a diluted product that they would give to the natives. I learned about this other thing called Taos Lightning, okay. which I guess is kind of like whiskey, only they it was like it had laudanum in it and some other spices and shit. And it's still a brand that exists today. If you look at Taos Lightning, although I'm pretty sure it doesn't have opium in it unless Big Pharma is just absolutely out of control. Okay. And, you know, the fact that his father died of alcohol addiction, it turns Red Cloud away from alcohol for like the rest of his life. And so Red Cloud, his mother and siblings go to live with an Oglala band, although they are like, I guess, ethnically or tribally brule. The chief of this Oglala, uh, Oglala band that they're living with is this guy, Old Smoke, and he mm -hmm. uh, welcomes them with open arms. Wow. Yeah, no, that's, you know, that's what I used to give the ops. It's old the ops. Smoke. No, let's not do that, because I don't want to explain any more black things to you. Let's just move on. Okay, let's just right, move on. Let's keep I, going. That's what I got in my in my in my gravity bong because I never cleaned that thing. No, I got, no, that's I got old smoke. You see, you keep keep doing bits after me, and the bits aren't as good. <laughs> like, <laughs> 1834, old smoke. He has to kick out his cousin, this other guy, Bull Bear, for insubordination. And as Bull Bear and like his uh, his cohort, his his boys are leaving or whatever, he throws sand in the face of old smoke. As he's leaving, and so Old Smoke's band Take becomes that, nigga. known Sorry, as the <laughs> as the Ite Sika, which is the bad faces, okay. and then Bull Bear's band is known as the Koya or Kiyuska, which literally I I think it means bitten in two, but it's mistranslated as cut off. So they're like the cut off band. They're like excommunicated, you know. Okay. And then you know. Red Cloud's growing up with Old Smoke's band of bad faces, and this is the Lakota people generally very nomadic or like uh, semi-sedentary. I've heard that of like nomadic. They're 
hunting the buffalo and then building up their stores of buffalo meat and then camping out during the winter, uh, allowing their horses to range out on the grain. And we're talking, uh, this band is around the Powder River country. And generally what we're talking about is the states I mentioned before, of like Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska, okay. and South Dakota. Were the Bad Faith uh, group, were they ugly? Were they ugly I don't guys? Know. No, Cause that can work two ways. Cause if you name your yeah. gang, well, we're the ugly gang. That's either because you guys have been called ugly and you're owning it and you're making it your own thing, or it's uh -huh. because you guys are ugly, but y'all get to the you, money. You're owning up to it. It's because it's because they got the money, the, the sand thrown into the face. You know. But oh, okay. I, I'm thinking that's that's a pretty bad at like imagine like a biker gang named the Bad Face. You don't want to fuck with the bad faces well i don't you know, need the, them to be named i don't want to fuck with any biker games in general i don't all. like i don't go around to different twin peaks and waco mm -hmm. fucking mm -hmm. with biker gangs yeah. and shit that's a deep cut reference and people need to understand that i really know what the fuck i'm talking about on here okay talk about the anyone. twin peaks <laughs> week waco banditos hell angels it's a fun well, time about five was that five years ago four no, years three, ago three four years ago three, years three ago. okay yeah so the games that the, the uh, Red Cloud played as a child and just the Lakota again generally are meant to like hone their hunting and tracking skills, teach them how to shoot a bow and arrow really well. Allegedly, or supposedly, Red Cloud was a really good shot. And, you know, their hunting and tracking skills and their fighting skills, and they kind of like raise children collectively. There's a very communal environment. And the natives are trading for coffee. Uh, around the various forts also tobacco sometimes alcohol at fort laramie which okay. is the the it's going to become a very controversial place or it's the the site of a lot of future controversy it's also known as the ellis island of the west and there are like different bands of natives that are more some bands are more dependent on white goods than others and so there's like there's plenty of room for factionalism and from the eyes of the whites there's wiggle room you know you can you can play the bands off of each other depending on how dependent they are on your goods or where their sympathies exactly lie or like an ancient tribal rivalry or a recent tribal ri rivalry for that matter yeah that's where the university of wyoming is laramie laramie wyoming huh Laramie, yeah, yeah. La Laramie, modern Laramie is like south. Wait, no, you talking about these, this is southwest of the Laramie. fort. Fort Laramie is is in a different spot than the modern city of Laramie. Okay, that sounds that's trash. That's a trash. I know that you should have just built out. Why did, you should just build out and called it Laramie? Oh, what fuck this city, All right, let's move on. <laughs> so mid eighteen thirties, Red Cloud. He's going on his first raids against the Pawnee and the Omaha and the Crow, and he's kind of building up a name for himself. And something else that the the author mentioned, I forgot to mention the damn off the top i was gonna start doing that this is a book called the heart of everything that is published 2013 mm -hmm. by bob drury and tom clavin and then i also read red clouds autobiography uh heart of everything that is is it pretty, it's good it's really well written but i i got it's not important what the authors of that book mention is this group called the wink tech which are like like trans people or homosexuals sometimes that like live on the edge of the, the Lakota spirits. village. Huh? Two spirits. What does that mean? Two, they got the two spirit. They have two spirits. That they have they have the spirit of, of most masculinity and femininity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't I have I haven't heard that. Come on, yeah, dog. That, Come on, dog. That you that gotta make, see you don't watch enough Joe Rogan. I'll Come it up, on, but I won't dive into it. You know what I mean? You know what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I won't do any research on it, but I want to mention uh, it. You know? Yeah, I will mention I'll mention things. I'll mention right it. on. And okay. they would kind of like resist traditional gender roles of like you have men dressing as women and doing quote unquote like women's work, like two spirits, like you, two you spirit. were talking about. Yeah. And they're they're considered outcasts among the Lakota men. However, they're also respected f for their decision, you know, because it's like they're doing what their medicine told them to do. And if you if if you want to disrespect the great spirit, then you're going to disrespect them. But you're not going to disrespect the great spirit. The great spirit is telling them that they are gay, and you, you have to can't stop touch using it. the word you know I mean? the word medicine as they would use it. Because when it comes out of your mouth, it makes me not like whatever Doesn't you're talking about. No, it you know just makes I mean? me it just makes me hate everything. <laughs> 
I'm trying to just understand the word, man. Like, like you gotta, you gotta do. You don't fuck with a man's medicine. You know what I mean? I yeah. No, I hate that. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> My hate medicine that. tells yeah. me not to drink coffee with with sugar or creamer because I will be dependent on the sugar and the creamer for my coffee my sociopath. my medicine tells me to drink my coffee black you're all right that's that's, that's what, what i are. and you can't question no you can't question i it, can man. question that's anything. that's my medicine bro you Guess question what? my medicine you, know, you fucking question, with a man's medicine i question everything under the sun come on dog i don't care right. <laughs> i don't i don't care <laughs> Late 1830s, Red Cloud, he's a pretty established warrior. He's known for his, like, grace. He's very, uh, ah, what's the word? I can't, I, like, he's like a sleuth. You know, he's very very slick, or his, like, movements are very graceful to where he could, like, knock you the fuck out in battle. But he's, like, he's not he's not wasting any wasting any movements, not excessive, not show showy. He's also known for his political cunning and his brutality at times. And But he's, he's like, also got this, this arrogance – but like the arrogance of a war chief, you know, kind of like a like a good type arrogance sometimes, you know. So 1841 or 1842, the bad faces have winter lodges along the Chugwater Creek, which is in the Laramie Plain, kind of around. For, I think it's like north of Fort Laramie. And Bull Bear's band of Kiuska is camping nearby. And there's word that a bad face brave ran off with a Kiuska girl. And the father of the girl wants recompense for his girl. And so Bull Bear and his braves, they get liquor, they get they get liquored up and they ride out to the bad face camp. And then Bull Bear himself kills the father of the bad face, quote unquote, offender. And then Red Cloud leads like a retaliatory raid. And in that raid, he shoots Bull Bear square in the fucking face. And before, right before he does it, he says, you are the cause of this and then mm. boom and this is like the one of the marks of red cloud's ascendancy because he's only like 20 at this time but he's letting bull bear fucking know that all of the violence that just took place is his fucking fault and now yeah. everybody knows you don't fuck with red cloud right i mean i've done that many a time in my life on oh on, yeah on on you know grand theft auto gta okay <laughs> yeah man done that shot, done shot many fools in the fucking uh -huh. face and they deserved it you know they didn't, were the cause of it. no many of them many of them didn't deserve anything <laughs> <laughs> many of them were very nice people who were just taking a spy a just spy npcs walk. running around you know what i mean and it's was, like well what's the mp what's npc non-playable yeah. characters Okay. Just the the program. You played little, too much. You played too much of that. <laughs> Yo, I was into it. I was also, into it. also threats out. Anybody who wants me on Tekken, they can get some. But that's just a separate thing. Tekken, Let's move on. Tekken, they <laughs> they be the cause of it, you know. <laughs> so 1850, Red Cloud. He's age 29 now, but he lacks the status that he that he craves, and this is mostly due to his lack of like a strong father figure because his father like died when he was young. And he was like of a different band. You know, his father was Brule and Red Cloud is tribally Brule and he's living with the Oglalos. I don't know how much of a role they had to play. It was yeah. more to do to the fact with that his father died. And usually you had some. Hey, baby, you hey, hey, I'm baby, just boy, speculating stop, here. Stop, stop, stop blaming the father. Remember about the environment because now the father's missing. I see well, you're it's to do. more of like I see a, you're like trying a, to blame that like right wing socially reinforced thing. You you're know? trying it's to blame more of a that right wing propaganda. Right? Uh, it's more uh -huh. of a structure. You know what? I'm watching you. I'm watching what okay. pages you like on Facebook now. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, man. And so he needs, he, Red Cloud is looking to marry into the right family. And immediately he's got a choice of two different wives, right? He's got Pine Leaf, and this is not Beckworth's Pine Leaf. This oh. is a different woman named, named Pine Leaf, yeah. whom he loves. And then Pretty Owl, who can get him status, right? So I've never and seen so, a Pretty Owl, so I'm not... I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm skeptical that about yeah. this one, you know, and uh, he he ends up proposing to Pretty Owl first. He gives his father like twelve horses, which is a pretty like high price. Like he leaves four out there, and then the father doesn't accept, and then he leaves another four out there, and then the father doesn't accept, and then he leaves another four out there, and then eventually the father's like, "All right, I accept your horses. You can have my daughter." So they have their marriage ceremony. There's two days of feasting and celebration, and on the night of the second. The second night of celebration, Pineleaf hangs herself. 
and Red Cloud goes out and finds her in the morning and like grieves for the loss of this woman whom he loved because he could have married her. He could have married both of them. It was just like Lakota custom that he would have to wait a few months as like a, a sign of respect to the first wife before taking another wife. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess Pine, like, I don't know. She no, was just so scorned that Red Cloud didn't didn't pick her first. You don't want to be the second, you know. Red Cloud was hugging up. He was he was hugging up like all like he was looking was at the status. Laid up all day uh -huh. doing shit. Then the next day you're out here feasting and marrying this other hoe named yep. Pretty Owl. That bitch ain't even pretty. What if you ever seen a pretty like I, I saw how twelve I, horses for Pretty Owl? I've really? This, yeah, really? No, I've seen just all all that is is Instagram filters. She's not uh, even. She's just a, that mm, bitch. Look, that bitch looks yep. like a regular owl. Yep. Yep. Mm -mm. Yep. Reg regular hours. <laughs> more more like. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes on, he starts going against around the same time. He starts going around. Uh, sorry. He starts going on raids against the crow. He steals a very large Bermuda. This is just another example of his kind of political cunning and just how fucking smart he was. He's on a raid against the crow. He steals a pretty large Bermuda of their horses and he splits his forces. He has one native wear his own headdress and ride back to their camp with all of the good horses. And then he splits with like a couple other guys and sets up a fake village and they leave all of the old worn out horses and the crow creep through and they stampede all of the horses that are set up in the fake village only to find that these are all the old shitty horses who like haven't eaten because like horses are dying on the way back and stuff. Yeah. And then they look up over the bluffs and they see Red Cloud just like mooning them, basically, because he's like, "Yeah, you guys, you guys got played yeah. by Red Cloud," you know. Would he actually moon them, or is that your that that's he, your he, I, that's your that, that is in your I'm pretty, that is in the auto. He pulled down his pants and he showed them his ass. Yes. Okay. Yes, you got duped, you know, S September of 1851. There's this thing called the winter count, which is where they like record all of their all of the most prominent things that happen throughout the year on a on a buffalo hide. The winter count of 1851 Lakota talk about the quote unquote big issue, which is the treaty signing at Horse Creek, a.k.a. the Horse Creek Council, a.k.a. the tr first treaty of Fort. Laramie and they gather a bunch of different tribes not just Lakota tribes the, um, the Cheyenne are there I think the Crows are there as well and a whole bunch of other different tribes are all there and they all touch the pen and sign this treaty and they agree to allow the whites to use the Holy Road or the Glory Road which is the Oregon Trail and not to make war on each other in exchange for annuities because, you know, you got the California gold rush going mm -hmm. on right now. And so the, the Oregon Trail is in like full swing and everything. But they need to calm the whites need to calm things down on the frontier. That way people can get to California and make their riches. And so this is why they they end up signing the Treaty of Fort Laramie, because people are passing through Laramie on the way to California. And so at this time, Red Cloud is like 30 and Sitting Bull is around the same age and at this time, they both kind of start to see like, hey, this is bullshit. Like we should we should fight this. Yeah, there's an upping of the stakes in late August of 1854. There's a look that Lakota camp is on the North Platte and an old cow that's in I think it like cuts through Nebraska into Colorado. Yeah, there's an old cow that breaks loose from this like uh, i think it was like a mormon guy who's on his way with his train and one of his one of his cows breaks loose and is killed by this guy named high forehead and then is eaten and so this guy marches out of fort laramie named lieutenant graton and he demands or Gratton, and he demands that the white man who lost the cow be reimbursed by the lakota and he marches into the lakota camp with a contingent of troops and they're kind of going back and forth back and forth and the the lakota chief conquering bear he's saying you know we're we're happy to repay him for it we can give him a few horses or whatever if that's okay but things break down and gratton orders his men to form a line and attack 
However, the soldiers like place the shoot too high and conquering bear is shot like nine different times. And that's like the only casualty of this battle. Yeah. But they're at least the Lakota are being attacked. And so red cloud and some of his, some of his top, top men counterattack and they kill nearly all of the white men. And there's this other notable Lakota warrior named crazy horse who is watching all of this take place from the bluffs and this is known as the Grattan massacre or Graton massacre and it's kind of like a it's uh never good when a massacre occurs i guess i know? mean it, it's never good when you have like dead white dead like like dead white dead people of all sense but like yes as a as a person of color when you when there's like a dead white person and you are around the area you go oh shit mm, mm. <laughs> it's not gonna end it's not gonna end well That's, you run for the hills you get yeah. out of there you know you're like this you, is you, not you, you do leave um you know you, you, do, <laughs> you do try to leave yeah you get it you get out of there the so summer of 1855, there's this pipe dance, the sacred pipe dance known as the Hunka along the White River in South Dakota. And it confirms Red Cloud as a member of basically Lakota aristocracy. Of he's kind of like breaking the, the bonds or he's breaking the shackles tied, chained around him from him, like not having a father to pull him up. And now he's like confirmed and this is hereditary. So it passes on to his sons as well. Okay. Summer of 1857, there's an intertribal Lakota council at Bear Butte, which is near the Black Hills, and all the headmen realize the necessity of banding together and fighting a protracted guerrilla war against the whites. And, and Red so, Cloud at this time. And so, ha, Mao did not invent guerrilla no, warfare. I'm joking. No, he <laughs> Certainly did the fuck it, not. This is right? a throwback to a previous episode uh-huh. where, where where I kind of saw I was like maybe maybe you know people did Mao and guerrilla warfare and Henry took very big issue with that. He took very. <laughs> I had a teacher try to tell me that like Mao invented a guerrilla. I was like no he, just, no, he wrote he it down. He, he, did he, it. Wrote he just it down he just wrote this shit modern, down. Where's the modern they, natives army. had this shit on lock. All right. Who's there's a modernish army, but that's a whole different thing. We're not, yeah, okay. Again, right. Okay. We're not military historians. We're not even the, real historians. We're not even real historians. <laughs> <laughs> You're trapped in the quagmire that is Matt. Okay. Yeah. I've been there. So, don't want to be there. <laughs> Red Cloud, he's got a pretty large host of Lakota warriors at his at his command and at his camp. And he's like been gradually expanding the borders of the Lakota domain against like the Crow and the Shoshone. And he's kind of like centered around the Black Hills and the Powder River Valley. And he's been developing new fighting tactics as he fights the Shoshone and the Crows. So 1858 to 1864, there's a relative cool down on the frontier because of the Civil War. Yeah. You know, they're busy <laughs> tearing each other to fucking bits. Yeah. But however, the white settlers that are remaining and just not the draft dodgers, but just the the regular dodgers. What yeah. do you what do you what do you call them? What's the word? I don't know. The fucking uh but I will the es- say the escapees. The, let's not let's not just call it let's not just call it tearing each other to pieces. Let's call it inventing modern warfare and nobody yeah. paying attention. Yeah. Literally inventing trench warfare uh-huh. and nobody caring just, outside just, of America. Just the deserters. Yeah. The yeah. Not the deserters. That's the word. But yeah, they definitely yeah. did. And Inve- we're, yeah. yeah. you know I mean? we're just practicing on each other. You know what I mean? War one is just happening that, but, yeah, in Virginia. On, yeah. Domestically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People are getting trench foot and shit. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, people are digging underneath the trenches and then mm-hmm. blowing out the trenches and then fighting yeah. in a fucking crack. There's a mm-hmm. lot going on in the Civil you War. You, you don't have any mustard gas, as far as I know, and you don't have any uh, Wright Brothers esque airplanes. That's the only differences that I. Can, we got balloons I can think though. Of. I'm pretty sure they have balloons. balloons. That yeah, is true. Balloons. Yes. You got people dropping bombs at an air balloon. Mm-hmm. Just some mm-hmm. fucking Mr. Bean shit. Just like drove <laughs> like, oh, they're over there. Nobody can hear me. Whoa. I'm this high, I'm this high up. <laughs> They're shooting my balloon, man. Though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, they not, should. not they well should. thought out. Like, they really should super, shoot your balloon. Super easy. In December of 1862, there is what I still believe. I couldn't find anything to the contrary. The largest max execution in American history. There's 38 Eastern Dakota warriors. We're talking about the Western Dakota, but in in uh, Minnesota, there's this whole uprising that goes on in 1862, and 38. Eastern Dakota warriors are hung in Mankato, Minnesota, and they died wearing their war paint, right? Okay. So the whole, what, what happens after the civil war, 
what the U.S.'s government's perspective is, is they want to secure these trails. You not only have the Oregon Trail, there's this offshoot being developed by this guy, John Bozeman, which is like shoots up, shoots north from the Oregon Trail. And it's basically Fort Laramie to Virginia City. It, it cuts northwest from Fort Laramie to I, I think Virginia City is now actually named Bozeman, but it cuts northwest like through through Wyoming up into into like western Montana because there's a gold rush going on around Virginia City. Okay. And another uh, really super important event that occurs during this time period is November 28, 1864. We talked about it last episode. It's the Sand Creek Massacre. Cheyennes under Black Kettle are turned away from Fort Lyon in like eastern Colorado. And they're told if they hunt around Sand Creek, as long as they fly a white flag, which they do, they would be fine. That turns out to be a lie. Uh, Shivington shows up and just fucking massacres the yeah. Cheyenne because he's really racist and really bloodthirsty. And like, it's openly celebrated. You know, it doesn't turn people, at least in the West, it is. Like, they hang the scalps of Cheyennes outside of, of taverns in, in Denver. It's fucked up. Yeah. So May of 1865, the Lakota and the Cheyenne hold a war council together on the Tongue River. And the primary leaders of the Lakota are Red Cloud and this guy, young man afraid of his horses. It's, it's supposed to be like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's supposed to be like young man, comma, you are afraid of his horses or young man, young man whose horses you are even afraid of. He that's wasn't afraid of his works. own horses. That's he not how nickname work. That's not how nicknames work. The nicknames... Like young man, comma, you are afraid of his horses. But that's not how know? nicknames work. It's nicknames work. To young man afraid of his horses. Nicknames have to be easily transferable. I yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of. Maybe it sounds better in Lakota because I can't. Maybe it like rolls off the tongue in Lakota, and it's only. I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't think that. I don't think that think nickname up. rolls off the tongue anywhere. But okay. If the, <laughs> if, if the nicknames are supposed to be shorter, this would be your mouth. Mouse in there. Y M A O H H. Now you're doing. Now you're trying to connect too much stuff to Mal. He's there, That's man. That's one thing that Mal doesn't like. <laughs> trying to thread this needle, man. It's yeah. all. It's all comes back somehow. Oh, Mal, Mal, Mal invented uh, threading, so. Oh, he did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so they decide after their buffalo hunt to strike at the tails or the trails west of the North Platte River, and they're harassing the shit out of Glory Road or the Oregon Trail. Yeah. There's kind of like smaller stations around the uh, around Fort Laramie that they would just completely sack and like burn and shit and kill anyone on the trail that you can. Settlers, army, we don't care. They're not using our fucking trail. Kill them. Yeah. Raiding settlements and like hacking down telephone poles. Full on warfare. You know, and this is in May into the summer of 1865. So people say like, oh, well, after the Civil War, we calmed down for a while. Not even true. We didn't even stop warring as a nation. We just kept that shit right on going. And a lot of the guys who went on to the fight, the subsequent war known as Red Cloud's War were either ex ex Confederate or Union, you know, even Union guys who were just like, yeah, I want to I want to keep it going because I'm a fucking psycho, you know. I want to stay on because now I'm traumatized and I uh -huh. don't, I can't go back to my general store in Springfield, mm -hmm. Illinois, but I, no, yeah. I, I also think like, um, as far as like, as far as like them, like not believing, like, like, of course the, the March of time shows you that like they that the white man was bullshitting and that the U S mm -hmm. was bullshitting and they're going to always break their promises. But mm -hmm. like, I just like to believe that like everybody who showed up trying to negotiate native American, uh, treaty the treaties with the Native Americans mm -hmm. was just also some dude who was also trying to sell them Bitcoin. Yo, mm. <laughs> like yep. at the same time, like like mm -hmm. the guy, the guys who were like, yo, I got this thing about Bitcoin, uh -huh. Forex. I'm really trying to get you into. I'm trying let to get send, it. Let me send you a Facebook Facebook message. I haven't I haven't talked oh, to you yeah. in ten years since high school. <laughs> let me send you this <laughs> message. That's the guy that we sent to be like, yo, but like for real, like the the scammer. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, how you doing? Haven't haven't seen you. What you been up to lately? Yeah. Oh, nothing much. How I you know you ain't been good? making this money though. <laughs> you, you you trying to get involved in this pyramid scheme? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. Let's make it happen. Yeah. You know, that's what your life needs right yeah. now. That's what you're missing. Okay. Yeah. 
late 1965, Red Cloud is in North Wyoming, I think in the Powder River Valley, and he's meeting with the various tribes, and he's elected one of the, I've heard four, that there were four of these guys, or seven of these guys, I'm not exactly sure, but they're the Tezi Tonka, which are the big bellies, and these are the, these are the war chiefs, and the war chief, the big bellies, they have to elect their own set of shirt wearers who are basically their enforcers. And I'm not sure if it's directly under Red Cloud, if he's like chosen by Red Cloud, but one of the shirt wearers that is chosen by the, the big bellies is Crazy Horse, who's going to come up later. He's a badass. June 1866, there's kind of like a like a shift in the white strategy because they have been like the effects of the civil war are just now starting to resonate with Washington and whatnot. And so they're starting to favor peace and there's this whole back and forth and white strategy between like, it, it's framed in the newspaper debate as like peace pipe or rifle and they're shifting towards the peace pipe. And so Lakota, they meet with Colonel Henry BB Carrington and William Tecumseh Sherman yeah. to negotiate at Laramie, I'm pretty sure. And Red Cloud, during this, he draws a line in the fucking sand. He says that, th that the natives are not going to give up the Bozeman Trail or allow whites to settle. And then while they're negotiating, um, it's either that they hear that, that there's some army commander out traversing the trails in their territory, or Carrington busts down the fucking door and is like, all right, we're doing war. And Red Cloud says to one of the officials, he says, the great father sends us presents and wants us to sell him the road, but the white chief goes with soldiers to steal the road before the Indians say yes or no. Oh, yeah. Like, what the fuck, you know? Hey, this is their character, big dog. Mm -hmm. Like, when somebody tells you who they are, just, just believe them. Just believe them. Yeah. You know? Let them, let them, yeah. So June to August of 1866, Carrington and his men are on the Northwestern March from Fort Laramie, and their whole objective is to, to build a string of forts along the Bozeman Trail to settle the area and just lock the shit down and continue to wage this war. They build Fort Reno is the first one out of Fort Laramie along the trail, then Fort Phil Kearney, and then Fort C.F. Smith, which is in southern Montana. I said the last episode is in Wyoming. It's not. It's in South Montana. And Red Cloud is fucking fear. The primary station where Carrington's at is Fort Phil Kearney. And Red Cloud is furious that the whites are taking wood and pines from this place that the whites called like Piney Island, which is like a small forest, three to four miles northwest of Fort Phil Kearney. Yeah. And there's a parallel leadership structure that's going on. You've got Red Cloud as the primary organizer, tactician, strategist commander kind of hanging back and then you've got as his field commander you've got crazy horse on the white side you've got carrington playing red clouds war and this other uh union blowhard william judd fetterman as you know filling crate the, like playing crate the he's a field commander you know yeah. he's out there right and, the, and let me and, and yeah the, yeah they 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 yeah the the union guys just make themselves look they just gotta win they just were mm -hmm. like looking like the good guys mm -hmm. civil war style mm -hmm. and then they go out and then they just prove <laughs> that they're the bad guys just out west it's <laughs> yeah. like that's why like in our whole narrative and we'll get to this later about like like the the lost cause and like the confederacy uh -huh. and like how the how a lot of cowboys like the confederacy that whole thing just kind of becomes like the cowboy mythos but like yeah, no, you guys just seed to these fucking, you know what? That's a you whole guys thing. are just we'll bloodthirsty warriors. You we'll guys don't care what you're warring for. It was yeah. never about ending slavery. It was oh, about was, just like getting all this, all this toxic that, rage that out is against a the other very side. Complex. That's a very complex question. That's a whole no, web. That's the, a whole. The, not, that's a complex question, and let's not yeah. let's not do that question right let's not now. Touch that one. That's a yes and a no. And but I mean, like a, a lot thing. of these union guys are like, yes, we're fighting to no, free the slaves. Now let's go kill the natives. You know, which is no, kind of a crazy pivot. There's a civil. There's a civil part of it. There's like people who are just in it for the civil war, and uh -huh. then they're like your army guys. Though yeah. they're like your professional soldiers. They're professional soldiers. Yeah. Uh, Iraq, 
what Afghanistan, mm. Mali, like mm. I'll go. I don't give. A fuck. I don't. I don't care. I'll <laughs> yeah. go anywhere. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, like, it's it's the same sort of thing. Yeah, professional soldiers, are professional soldiers. Like they're, they're, yeah, they're that's go. true. Like, that is true. Yeah. And it was like such a huge profession. It's still. I don't want to say. I'll say it isn't as much of like now we've become more specialized and we got more people working office jobs and trying to get degrees. But like 19th century, soldier was like like one third of your people. You no, know what I'm, you know what no, I'm saying. I, w- I wouldn't say or is that. that too I w- much. I would definitely not say that. Now we're just speculating. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm I just, would definitely. I, I, I wouldn't say one third. I would. I well, we don't have the numbers on this. We don't. We, we have no <laughs> numbers. We're just now in no number territory. Not at all. We're just no. Yeah. yeah. I make a lot of shit up. All right. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> me, don't say, say that. that. Doing a history podcast. <laughs> July through November <laughs> of, <laughs> of 1866, basically everything between Fort Phil Kearney and Reno Station and CF Smith, for that matter, everything that the Lakota claim as territory, everything the Powder River country is a fucking no man's land. Like you're a civilian, you're trying to get from one fort to the next because you want to get that gold in Virginia City, you're yeah. fucking done. You get wiped the fuck out. It's like a whole protracted guerrilla war is going on. You get your cattles, cattle stolen, you are scalped and left in an unmarked grave. You know, they're defending their country, right? Yeah. Around October, Lakota starts splitting into various factions because they're getting tired of the war. And so you've got your You've got your more militant faction under Red Cloud, who's like, we need to, we need to keep it going. We're, we need to keep up the pressure. And then you've got your more peace-minded faction that's saying, like, maybe it's time to come to the table, right? There's this combined camp of Lakota, Arapaho, and I think some Cheyenne as well, and some Grove and Trey. The, but the army is also polarized, is also splitting into factions. You've got Carrington, who's more, he's trying to play it safe. He's a little more cautious. And then you've got William Judd Fetterman, who wants to wage a more aggressive war. There's also word that Fetterman, from like above Carrington's head, from I think it's from uh, General Cook, is saying to Fetterman that he is going to be made battalion commander over Carrington during an upcoming refitting. Yeah. And so maybe there's some opportunity for Fetterman if he can just prove himself, right? Yeah, it's that professional soldier shit, dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is that. Mm-hmm. This is that. Like, <laughs> this is the, like, yo, if I can kill more people, I can make captain. Come on, I can get a, pro- I can get a promotion. <laughs> I, can get a promotion. I can get a promotion. I can swing this generalship to the White House, man. I can do it, right? So maybe. Gotta... Yeah, but let's not, you know, you know, you know, so, you know. Love the armed forces, though. Love our armed forces. Love the armed forces. <laughs> love, love, love y'all. Love y'all, big dog. Despair. Love y'all, big dog. Not y'all. Not y'all. The armed for- not, not you guys. You. We're not talking you. about 19th century. 19th all right? century. This is, not this, not is, you. This, is, this is history. <laughs> not okay? you. This not doesn't you. happen anymore. I mean, look okay. here. All right. Let's. All right. <laughs> <laughs> December 21st of 1866, Fetterman goes out with 81 men to escort a wood gathering caravan at Piney Island, again, three to four miles outside Fort Phil Kearney, and he's got explicit instructions from Carrington not to pursue the natives if they attack or if they initiate. And Crazy Horse, he's leading the decoy party. The decoy party is like a couple dudes who go out there on their horses right to where the whites can see them, but right out of range of the rifles and basically pretend their horses are lame or they're having an issue with the horseshoe or one of their legs isn't working and like get off their horses designed to get the white men to chase them. And that's exactly what Fetterman does. His crazy horse is like riding with his band of warriors back beyond this place called Lodge Trail Ridge. And Fetterman's men chase him over Lodge Trail Ridge into this massive ambush involving like 2,000 natives, a combined force, again, of the tribes aforementioned. All of them are killed, right? It is the largest native victory over the whites until Little Bighorn. And it's known as the Fetterman Massacre or Battle of the Hundred in the Hands by the natives. And Sherman in- It's 81 killed. 81 killed. 
Ah, uh, Dade, Dade Mask, Dade Mask, you're still everybody. Big. Dade Mask is still big. That's 100, it's 108. It's 108. Mm, so it isn't the biggest native no, victory. No, no, it, no. Okay, it is. It is the biggest. <laughs> it is the biggest uh, native victory over the whites west of the Mississippi. Oh, okay. All How right. about that? Okay. Huh? That's all right. Now you're now you're being now you now you're the worst. Keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> and none other than General William Tecumseh Sherman, in response to the Fetterman massacre, says. We must act with vindictive earnestness against the Sioux, even to their extermination, men, women, and children. I love how Sherman's always like, let's your always boy go, Sherman. Let's go, let's go as far as possible yep. all, all the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's like, he's like, first, like, <laughs> it's like you play Monopoly with Sherman, and then like his first move is, I'm gonna throw the fucking board off the goddamn table. I'm just gonna punch all of you. <laughs> yeah, that's his. That's... So you can't fucking, so you can't roll the dice anymore, and then yeah. I win. You know, yeah, that's cool. That's, and that's... it's a really ironic statement for, for Sherman to be advocating the annihilation the extermination of a native population when his middle name is tecumseh he's named after a native you know what it's kind of it's kind of a crazy crazy coincidence guess what guess what he knew that and didn't give a fuck he didn't give a fuck (laughs) no no he did not did not care May 1867, there's this big intertribal Sundance along the Powder River. We'll talk more about the Sundance later. And the chiefs are all conferring. The whites want the Oglala to come to Laramie and, quote unquote, touch the pen, like sign this treaty and agree to end the war and keep the Bozeman Trail open. And Red Cloud's open to it, but he's like, you guys got to leave the fucking forts first. You know, I'm not signing a shit till you, till you guys are gone. And that's exactly what they say on June 12th of 1867 they basically red cloud and old man afraid of his horses the the father of young man afraid of his horses they go to fort laramie okay and old man is like speaking to the whites no that's just too bad i'm laughing because that's two bad names that's two, two that's two well, bad you got, you got old that's man awful man Whose awful horses man. you are afraid of, and then no, young man. That's a whose bad nickname. That's a bad name. Okay. That's a bad name. That's a bad nickname. That is a bad way to go about your life. And I'm just, you, uh, I'm sorry. You, that's a bad way to be. That, you gonna say that to his face? Yes, I would. I would say that's a bad I bet, name. I bet. I bet his horses come around. And you're gonna start shitting yourself. All right. I don't care. I shit myself <laughs> before. I was a child once. A child? You haven't shit yourself as an adult yet? No, I haven't done that. Okay. Well, I've always been near a bathroom and had access right. to it. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so, old man afraid of his horses is speaking to the whites, and then Red Cloud is watching behind him on the bluffs, which I thought was kind of a cool image. And again, they're reiterating their point that, like, we're not signing shit till you guys get the fuck out of the forts. So spring of 1868, the war is at a stalemate. The U.S. is still occupying the forts, but the trail is virtually closed. There's like no travel on it. And Sherman and Grant are going back and forth as as far as what should be included in the treaty. They draw it up, and it promises all of South Dakota west of the Missouri River as permanent native territory, while from the Black Hills in southwest Dakota – to the Powder River in like central Wyoming would be considered unceded Indian territory. And the whites agree to abandon the fort, but the natives agree as far as touching the pen to become civilized. And it's kind of a a point of contention whether or not Red Cloud knew that was a stipulation of the treaty, whether or not he would have signed it. Red Cloud thought he was basically getting everything from the Missouri River in South Dakota to the powder river like their country in perpetuity you know or maybe he wouldn't have signed it he just missed a phone call from like john ross who's like no 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 that's not no 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 you didn't see my you see a youtube video i put out you see a youtube video i put out just talking about how the civilized shit doesn't work with these niggas bro i tagged you in the comments man no it's the whole thing like i i have i have uh, i have mm-hmm. a series of rants i call mm-hmm. them vlogs it's my uh-huh. new thing i'm doing it's on uh-huh. this thing called youtube i don't know if you've heard of yeah, it i don't know and it's just it. it's just me john ross leader of the cherokee nation yep just really laying out how <laughs> how this shit happens how, you know how what how exactly that civilized shit does yeah work. yeah how they're gonna fucking lie to you every yeah. chance they get right yeah And so they don't end up, the whites don't end up leaving the forts until July 29th of 1868. They finally march out of C.F. Smith, 
Reno and Kearney, and the natives burned those forts down. And then November of 1868, Red Cloud and 125 other native leaders ride into Fort Laramie to sign a peace treaty with the U.S. on his terms. And it cedes them all that territory. But I think the thing, it's not underplayed, but that is unknown, is that he forced the U.S. to come to the table after his victory. You know what I mean? This is way out in the plains. And yeah, war weariness is is part of that. And the, the, you know, U.S. Army was undersupplied. But also he waged a war and won against the U.S. He did what Robert E. Lee could not. You know what I mean? If he brought them to the, he said, no, you're, you're signing because of what I did. I here's won the, this war. Here's the thing. Uh, they just didn't register. They just didn't hear them when they said, when they said, they just didn't say no take backsies. So mm, they just had their fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers that's, crossed. All, that's all they did. All you got to do the is, US is like, you have to officially, I don't know if you know about kind of jurisprudence or juris yes. jurisprudence. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know if you know about uh, United States jurisprudence, but if you don't say, no takes these backsies. backsies. It's all null and void. It's null okay. and void, big dog. <laughs> it's just smoke. All right. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's just we just we just it, it expires whenever uh -huh. I want it. Wow. Whenever I wanted <laughs> want to, because yeah. you didn't say no who's 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 to blame, really, here, right? Yeah. And the treaty is ratified by the US Senate. So this is official government policy and just kind of pointing out how large of a movement this was. I think at its peak. I've got a figure that says 15,000 natives were camped along the, the Powder River. That's not all warriors. Call it living. Like, Don't call it camped. <laughs> like, living along living, the Powder River. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, you know, because they lived in various places. Yeah, but yeah, at yeah. this time, as far as waging this war, 15,000, which okay. is like huge. You know, it's like one of the biggest movements. It's way bigger than Tecumseh's for that matter. But yeah, we're not measuring sticks here, you know? Yeah. Summer of 1869, Red Cloud and around 5,000 Oglalas moved to the Red Cloud Agency, which is south of the Black Hills along the White River. It's like north. It's the panhandle of Nebraska. Okay. And the rest of his life, he's like serving as an advocate for his people. He meets with President Grant like twice. It isn't until July 4th of 1903 that he gives his abdication speech. And I'm going to read part part of it real quick because I think it's pretty pretty poignant. To where he's lived his life as an advocate for his people. He's been shafted a lot. He says, they tell us that we Indians and they, or we are Indians and they are white men and that we must be treated different from the white men. This is true. But the white men should say how he should be treated and the Indian should say how he should be treated. It is not so. The white man says how the white man should be treated, and the white man says how the Lakota shall be treated, and the Lakota has nothing to say in this matter. The commissioners and the white people sent to us by the president tell us that the white man or the white people know what is best for us. How can this be? No white man was born an Indian, then how can he think as an Indian thinks? It isn't until December 10th of 1909 that Red Cloud dies on the reservation and we're going to touch more on what happened in the latter half of his life in the next episode when we talk about crazy horse and kind of how the baton was passed from red clouds war to the the war waged in the 1870s by crazy horse and of course sitting okay not well henry thank you for that Guys, you can find us um, at, on social media. Uh, please give us a like, follow, share. share. Find us on Instagram at Hard Fight History, uh, Facebook at Hard Fight History, mm -hmm. uh, Twitter, HFH Podcast, YouTube at Hard Fight History. Uh, guys, also follow me at Joshua B. Stokes on Instagram and Twitter and Joshua Stokes on Facebook. How about you, Henry? Then I'm just Henry Price on Facebook and just Henry E. Price on Instagram. Okay, guys. Well, thank you for listening. You guys have been beautiful. Uh, love you. Just stay safe. <laughs>